Today's video is going to be looking at similarity and how similarity plays a role when parallel lines get involved. So if three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, then the parallel lines divide the transversals proportionally. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four parallel lines, and the transversals, remember, are the lines that are being cut through those parallel lines. They are going to be divided proportionally, which is going to allow us to set up ratios and proportions to solve for missing pieces. The awesome thing about this is there's almost no way to set up a wrong proportion because they are split all proportionally. You just have to follow a pattern. Now there are some wrong ways we can't go diagonally, but I know that when I draw these, they're going to be divided. So I could have a pattern of six over 10. So if I go from here to here, I want to follow that same pattern on the other transversal. So if I go from six to 10, I've got to go two A to B. But that's not the only pattern I could have made. Maybe I went across, I could go six over two A. So if I go, left to right on top, then I have to go left to right on the bottom. But that's not the only thing I could have done either. Who instead of instead of going left to right, maybe I wanted to go right to left, bottom to top. So if I go from B to 10, then I've got to go 2A to 6. Again, there's other ways I could have done this. It's just about following a pattern that you see and make sure that you are consistent with that pattern. You just don't want to go diagonally. But as I look at all those proportions, I do have a problem as I have two variables. I don't want two variables. So we've got to do some other work before we can start solving there. I notice that I can solve for B right away. I'm given that this whole section right here is 14. So what does B have to be, which added to nine gives us 14? That's gonna be five, because five plus nine is 14, or you could have done 14 minus nine. Either way, B ends up being five. So now I can use these four pieces to solve for A. We can use any of the patterns we set up. So if I go six over 10, that's top to bottom on the left, top to bottom on the right, Cross multiply, six times five is 30, 10 times two gives us 20A. We divide by 20 and A equals 1.5. So we found A, we have found B, now we just need to find C. And again, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different ways that you can find C. I'm going to just look at the bottom two. I could look at the top and the very bottom. I could combine those, but just to make it simple, I just want to follow a pattern. So let's do a different pattern. I'm going to go 10 to 5. So top left to top right is going to be in the same corresponding order as C to 9. Then we cross multiply, 10 times nine is 90, equals five C, we divide by five, and C is gonna be equal to 18. So these are almost easier because there's almost no way to write a wrong proportion as long as you solve your proportion correctly. Just be careful about going diagonally. So we're going to use this shortcut and we're going to apply it to triangles. It doesn't always work with all triangles. So when we saw this kind of triangle problem before, what we did is we separated the triangle to two different triangles, the small triangle from top and then the big triangle on the bottom. So this was seven, this was eight. Oh, this big side over here, x plus two plus seven gives us x plus nine. Eight plus 12 is 20. So we had to set up a proportion of corresponding sides. So seven over X plus nine equals eight over 20. So corresponding locations in different triangles had to be set up from each other. We have a shortcut we can do just like above, as long as we follow a pattern, seven to eight. 
I could do 7 over 8 is equal to x plus 2 over 12. I could do 7 over x plus 2 is equal to 8 over 12. Again, as long as you are consistent and you follow the same pattern every time, you're not going to get a wrong answer. So let's just go ahead and cross multiply this example. So 7 times 12 is going to give us 84. 8 times x plus 2. Go ahead and distribute that 8 to get 8x plus 16. Move our 16 over. 68 equals 8x. Divide by 8. And we find that x is going to be equal to 8.5. So we could use the way we knew before by separating into two triangles. That's going to work every single time. Or we could have used our shortcut. Now we said we can only use it sometimes. Anytime the base of the triangle is involved, you cannot use the shortcut. So we cannot use the shortcut when the base the bases of the triangle are being used. In this case we have to draw out the two triangles. So we have the small triangle from the top which is base of 12 side of 4 and then we have the larger triangle this whole side, 6 plus 4 is going to give us 10 with the base of x. You do have some, you know, liberty here. You can go in any corresponding order that you want. So x corresponds to 12. x over 12 is going to equal to 10 to 4. Cross multiply. 4x equals 10 times 12 is 120. Divide by 4 and we find that x is going to be equal to 30. All right, and we are finished with our video.